Hello everyone, it's your boy uh, Pinpin, or Seth, whatever you want to call me. I'm pretty tired, but I just wanted to get this video out of the way because I've been thinking about it for a while. Uh, this video will be part two to how do you determine who wins a debate. Uh, in the first one, we talked about the pragma dialectical model and which, you know, you provide argumentations or, or for the application of such values in the confrontation stage of argumentative discourse and the opening stage that participants will agree on what propositions they will jointly accept without further argument and how will they jointly decide on the acceptability of other propositions. So it's kind of like pragma like pragmatism, right? It's like a pragmatic way of argument. Uh, in the confrontation stage, issues about the acceptability of premises are settled by appeal to these agreements. So, you know, when you guys are at the end of your debate and no one's really blatantly won, conceded, or whatever, uh, it would be based on your agreements that you made at the beginning. Now, this is kind of ultra-formal because, obviously, informal debates, it was like, hey, what's up, bitch? <laughs> like, what'd you say to me? And they're like, debate me now! You know, and, like, that's how most debates kind of go, you know? <laughs> so there's not, like, a lot of uh, formalities when it comes to setting them up. So I would actually argue that the the more you dislike someone, by the way, the more agreements you should make so they don't squirm away if you really think you're a lot better than them. Uh, in the confrontation stage, like I said before, issues about the acceptability of premises are settled by appeal to these agreements. An approach is also provided for meeting an attack in the justification or refutation potential of an argument in this confrontation stage. Um, now, that was in the first video. Okay, so if you want to know more about that, go to that. Okay, in that video, I talk about judging. And if a judge says that someone won, they won. Okay, if, if you guys agreed on who won. Okay? If there's no one determining who won a debate, you might as well say there's there's no one who won the debate unless you're going to debate them on who won the debate after that, <laughs> uh, which seems a little bit complicated. But let's say you are a judge and the debate ends. And I recently had a debate I actually had to judge and I'm usually pretty I'm pretty scummy. Like uh, I'll usually just be like, oh, sorry, guys, I'm not really into, into uh, judging, even if there's no good judges. But this time I was like, all right, I'll step in. It's two of my friends um, and there's a huge crowd. Everyone hated each other. So I was like, all right, I'll 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 be kind of neutral and I'll do it. I'll actually link that judgment in the description, by the way, so you can actually kind of read how I did it if you're curious. Uh, so the way that I, I went about it was obviously goalpost. Now, I've actually been in a debate myself where someone was saying, ah, oh, well, I think you lost a debate because a person had more points than you or they were pushing more points or something like that. No, it wasn't, it wasn't because someone had more points than you. And points is kind of a weird term because points could either mean you're, you're pushing a point or, you know, you successfully defended or refuted a point. But my response to that was basically, well, let's say we're debating about the health of cake versus pie, and I have pie, and you have cake, and I'm constantly on the assertive, right? I'm constantly pushing every point I can forward. Let's say I push 20 points forward. I put 20 points on the table. And you refute 18 of them. So I only won two points, and you won 18 points. So now it's like, well, did he win because he defended himself from 18 of the points? Well, if we go back to the premise, the premise was, what's healthier, cake or pie? What if I was the only one that actually pushed points forward to this conclusion and you only defended. Well, in terms of a goalpost and the premise, what's healthier, I have established more evidence and points proving it. Even if you technically won more points in the defense, you never once proved that cake was healthier than pie. You only tried to prove that pie wasn't inherently healthier than cake. But I have two points proving it now, and you have no points proving that cake is healthier. Well, in that case, I would win the debate, right? That's kind of the conclusion I came to. Now, another weird thing that happened to me uh, when I was judging this this debate, which is actually between a guy named Torres Silveiro and Aeroflame, um, is they had this heated argument. And at the very beginning, you know, he 
we had Aeroflame. He defended his point against. Uh, he defended against one of Taurus's points. But in the judgment, I'm not going to be like, well, just because Taurus no longer has this this weapon at his disposal doesn't mean that Aeroflame is now inherently closer to his conclusion. It just means that Taurus failed his attack. So I can't say that Aeroflame is now winning the debate. It's more like, well, now it's Arrow's turn to kind of try to push his point forward, right? So instead of, you know, Arrow's winning, it's more like, well, now it's Arrow's turn to win. So from there, they then get into really, really subjective territory. Like I'm judging this was very difficult. Like judging it is extremely difficult. And they got into points that aren't even it, it was like this huge nonsensical debate where they kind of got into points that weren't even relevant to the conclusion almost. It was almost like they were just trying to set up points that would be relevant eventually to the conclusion. Or setting up points that would support points that would be relevant. So we didn't really ever get to the meat, but then at the very end, the very end of the argument, uh, Taurus presented an argument that was extremely meaty, really pivotal stuff, like extremely relevant to the conclusion. And then Aeroflame re responded with, well, I think I've already done good enough in this argument. I'm tired. Let's end it there. So <laughs> I, at, at that point, I was like, well... Um, that's a weird spot to stop. You know, you have this extremely subjective, I, I want to say the salad or the appetizer of the debate for like 40 minutes. And then at the very end of the argument, we have, we, we finally get the steak and only Taurus is eating it. So it's like, well, it seems like Taurus had, had eaten more food in this debate, if that makes sense. So I had to give it to Taurus and you can look at my judgment in the description. So in this case, I guess the, the message of this video, it's very brief, very simple, is winning more points doesn't necessarily entail victory. It's more so who gets closer to their goalpost, okay? But that also depends as well because some people judge debates based on your caliber of argument rather than if you actually won some kind of knowledge battle. It's almost like you know, sophistries or sophists in back in the day where they didn't really care if they were right. They cared about convincing people or putting on a, a strong performance of their rhetoric and stuff. And some people will judge that you won a debate based on proving that you're a better debater in a debate. And some people think, well, if you go into an argument under the premises that you're trying to win a knowledge competition, even if you're not low key, uh, whoever wins this knowledge competition is inherently a better debater because they were able to think deeper than the other person or they were able to see how this would turn out better than the other person. But other people would be like, well, he just shat on 18 of your points and sure, you won two that were the most relevant. But I think as a debater, he, he was kind of pooping on you the whole time. He was just being passive. So... It's certainly subjective territory. I'm not going to say it's objective. Obviously, this is my opinion, but I'm just simply going to say, in my opinion, that the goalpost is the most important aspect to a debate if that's what you're arguing, okay? If you're going to argue, you know, who has the best rhetoric or something more subjective, sure, maybe, maybe it'd be a little bit different. I hope you enjoyed this video. Just something a little short. I just wanted a little update. Uh, I haven't been uploading much on this channel, so I hope you appreciate something like this and... I have a lot of videos I'm planning on uploading soon. I'm kind of feeling it, so we'll uh you'll be seeing me around.